Okay, it's my pleasure now to invite one of my board members and a great friend to us and a great friend to me, Stacy Adams. She's going to tell us all about the places to, that we used to dine out in in South Florida. Your, her bio is in your little package, so let's talk about food. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Yes, let's talk about food. Especially because we have food here, right? I hope everyone has partaken in the food. <laughs> okay, folks, so welcome. Good afternoon. As Karen mentioned, I am Stacy Adams. I think most of you probably have read the bio if you've been chilling out a little bit the past few minutes, you know who I am, but just uh, quick and dirty, I'm a Hollywood Historical Society board member, been a board member for a long time, and I'm proud to finally be doing this talk. So let's just jump right into it, guys. All right, so why am I doing this? I've been wanting to do this talk for a very, very, very long time. And I have to say, when it was all said and done, I ended up with about 220 topics, 220 slides which we will not be covering all today, <laughs> or we will be here until Tuesday. So I had this painstaking job of narrowing this down. So I'm gonna ask you to be slightly kind to me today. I'm covering a lot, but I'm not covering everything. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So a little bit about me, I grew up in Hollywood. I'm a West Hollywood girl, grew up on 68th and Taft. I was schooled at Boulevard Heights, Apollo, MacArthur. I'm through and through Hollywood. Uh, raised in Hollywood, I've worked in Broward my whole life, lived in Broward my whole life. I am just full of a uh, true Hollywood Broward girl. So I have a deep appreciation for this city. I'm a history buff too. I love history. Um, as some of you may have seen in my bio or if you heard my talks before, this all started when I was in fourth grade at Boulevard Heights. I had this awesome teacher, Mr. Storr, gave us a Florida history assignment, and I was just hooked at that point. I thought, oh my goodness, like, I understand this history. I care about this history. I don't care about other kinds of history, but this really speaks to me. So with that, I just kept in tune with history throughout my whole schooling, got pretty into it, and it carried throughout my college years where I majored in history too. So I was fortunate to find the Hollywood Historical Society at that point where I met other people that loved history, because. Unfortunately, I wasn't doing history for a living, if you will, but I could still meet people, talk to people about local history. So that's really where I get my, uh, my kicks from. Just love talking history with you guys. And all in all, as I mentioned, I just love this city. I love it. I live in West Pembroke Pines now. Um, it might startle some of you of how far west I live. I do live west of 95, west of University. I live west of Flamingo. I live west of 75. All right? I'm on 196th and Sheridan, so that's where I am. I am one light east of US 27. That's where I am. So all in all, I still come this way for everything. I just love it out here, and I wouldn't change a bit about it. So what to expect today? As I mentioned, all right, guys, this is, this is going to be the hard part. This is going to be the real hard part. Now, some of you got here pretty early, which I'm thrilled about, because I kind of was running a little pre-show, as you saw. So some of those items, unfortunately, were not able to make it into to the talk. It, like I said, it was painstaking. The way I really had to narrow this down were, were pretty much two things. What are the ones I got to talk about that are just quintessential Hollywood? And what are the ones that I just kind of like a lot? <laughs> so it's a little personal, too. It had to get a little personal because there were just a few that I really wanted to mention to you guys. So as I say here, we're not covering every single restaurant. Uh, if this goes super well, which I see a lot of people here, which, so that's really awesome. Maybe we might have a second helping talk of seconds, right? That cover the ones maybe I didn't get to. That might be fun. We'll, we'll do that. We'll think about that. I encourage you guys to share your reactions and your memories. If something comes up here and you just get thrilled about it and you love it, hoot, holler, clap, because that's what it's all about, us connecting today through history to remember, you know, these places that really meant a lot to us. Um, finally, this is another hard one. Got to keep me honest. Got to keep me honest here. A lot of this information I was able to find and verify pretty accurately, but I have some holes in my research, and I might seek a couple of you know folks out there to keep me honest. I'm looking around this room. I know a lot of you. 
I have a speck of knowledge compared to what is in this room. So I encourage you guys, again, you know, if I throw a date out that doesn't seem quite right, or if I ask you guys for a date, and you know it, help me out here. That's how we really fill in the holes and get this history completely accurate. Uh, and as I mentioned too, you know, I really had to break this down. I'm staying really within Hollywood. There are a lot of places that I wanted to cover that are that kind of skirt Hollywood, you know, like Dania, Hollandale, but it just in the essence of time, had to keep this baby pretty, pretty tight here. But hopefully we'll get to it all um, in the pre-show. I will probably play it for you guys again if you want to stick around. You know, this will probably be about 45 minutes, an hour, my portion, but when it's all said and done, I'd be happy to run it again so you guys can have some more memories by seeing those photos that I put together earlier. All right, guys, so who's hungry? <laughs> Hopefully we're not too hungry anymore because we got this awesome spread in the back. So as I say, you know, if you haven't already, before you leave today, please partake. We really want to whet your appetite covering some of these areas. And again, the, the order that I have this going in, it's kind of like an alphabetical order, so you can kind of stick with me to see where we are time-wise. Uh, with that, I'm going to start with Bavarian Village. Oh, I remember Bavarian Village. Gotta love Bavarian. And I think I just heard somebody say the Zinkler family. Yes, the Zinkler family owned this um, German restaurant. Also Martha's, very, thank you, yes, yes. Good fact, good fact. This was on Federal Highway. Um, it was around from about the 60s to about uh, the mid-2000s. Uh, great story here. George Sr., George uh, Zinkler Sr., he came to the U.S. in 1926 after doing an apprenticeship in Munich. He went to D.C., opened this great catering business, and then found his way to South Florida, opens this German restaurant. As you can see, the picture of the lady here, um, I'm going to mispronounce this, Frau Lynn, is that right? Frau Lynn. Thank you, thank you. And I just love this beautiful you know, dress that she's wearing here. He was truly keeping this place honest in terms of the German culture. So you see this great native dress. There were people playing accordions as you dined. Uh, you had true sauerbraten, kraut, red cabbage, and of course the German beer steins. You can't, you can't have a German restaurant without that. So Bavarian Village is definitely one of the ones that we all miss and remember fondly. And this picture, just for your reference, this is from 1981. But as I said, this uh, restaurant closed kind of in about the, the mid to late 2000s. All right, how about Billy? So as I said, this talk is dining out restaurants of the past and still standing. So we're going to see a couple that are still standing, that are really still doing well, that are quintessential Hollywood again. Now, Billy's, Billy Hershey, he once worked at Joe's Stone Crabs. That is, that is a fact. I always heard that rumor, but I wondered. Um, and once married to a member of the restaurant uh, founders, the Weiss family of, of, Joe, of Joe Stonecrabs. Now, the good thing about Billy's compared to Joe's is the view is better. You're on the water. <laughs> so right there, that's a plus. And the wait, right? You can get into Billy's, as, whereas Joe's, you've got to be standing in line or making reservations worlds in advance. Uh, this is on Ocean Drive at the old Top Ciders restaurant which um, the bottom used to have a ground level jet ski rental place. Well, Billy's converted that into the market that we know today where you, you don't even have to dine there. You could just go in, order some stone crabs, take them home. I highly recommend it. The markup in restaurants, as we know, is insane. So if you really just want to indulge in really good stone crabs, go to the market, get a big bag and take them home. That's what we do. Now, one thing about stone crabs that I love, and I'm sure most of you know, but in case some of you don't, I want to share this fun fact with you guys. The stone crab season, there's a way to know when it's stone crab season based on the months. Do we know what that is? The R. The R. Awesome, good. If the month has an R in it, we're pretty much in stone crab season. So that's a good way to remember it. It's, um, it's kind of rough when it starts and stops. There's some controversy there, but for the most part, you got to figure right now, we are deep in stone crab season, so enjoy, guys, enjoy. Uh, Billy's, of course, huge, sends all over the place, world-renowned hotels, restaurants all over, so Billy's is a big deal. Okay, guys, Capone's Flicker Light. So again, not one that's still here again, right? Um, started by Vincent Capone, uh, also on Ocean Drive, just down the street. Uh, Chicago pizza, right? Chicago pizza, waterfront, beautiful waterfront dining. 
open in 63 and still open to this day. So Capone's is... Yes, thank you. There is that second location across from the courthouse. So if you don't want to sit on the water, or you want something a little bit more indoorsy or maybe a little less rough. It gets kind of rough here sometimes at night. <laughs> but thank you. Same good quality food right there across from the courthouse, another location. Now, guys, another the cool thing about Capone's that I actually remember, because I was very naive back in the day, went to La Tub without cash. Uh, you ever done that? Uh, you done that? Yeah. So these guys have an ATM. They've had an ATM for quite a while. They were smart on that. So if you went to La Tub back in the day when they only took cash, you could run over to Capone's and get your cash that way. <laughs> I just love that about Capone's. All right, Circus Playhouse. Who remembers Circus Playhouse? Oh, wonderful. There's a couple of you guys. Good. So this is me throwing in one of my personal favorites, guys. So Circus Playhouse, it was on 441, across from the Fashion Center, next to the Plaza Twin Movie Theater. There was that movie theater right next door to Circus Playhouse. And Circus Playhouse was pretty much like Dave & Buster's is today, but for kids. <laughs> so people like me have evolved into adulthood now go to Dave & Buster's to get their Circus Playhouse fix that they no longer have. So as um, if you can imagine being like a Dave & Buster's, um, it's a, an arcade, restaurant, it had an animatronic show, uh, skee-ball, we all love that game, skee-ball. It even had an indoor merry-go-round, you see towards the bottom there, there was actually an indoor merry-go-round in Circus Playhouse. Uh, thing I loved about it, upper left there, you see the robot, that was CP. <laughs> CP brought you your cake and your pizza. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Had a lot of good birthday parties there at Circus Playhouse. Just awesome, good time. Um, now I think it's a church. You guys, can you keep me honest? Yeah, I think it's a church in that location now. So Circus Playhouse was huge back in the day. All right, guys, Conca de Oro. <laughs> so some of us uh, missed this fondly already. So Conca de Oro has a cool story. There's a gentleman, uh, Domenico De Luca, came straight from Naples, Italy, and he bought this place. And rumor has it, he couldn't afford a new sign, so the place just kind of stuck with the name Conca di Oro with that pizza place that was there before. And um, this is on Tyler Street near the Circle. Uh, Conca di Oro goes back to 76, uh, closed just a few years ago in 2012. Uh, now it's a PNC bank. I believe there's a bank in that location. Uh, Yes, so there's another location. Thank you. You got it right across from Dania High Life. So you can still get your fix. You can still get our fix there. So good. Rumor has it too, guys, another cool rumor, that they sold so much delicious veal that they had a guy full-time filleting this veal. Full-time employee. Again, I hope that's true. It's a cool rumor. I hope that's true. So that's Conca de Oro. <laughs> All right. I gotta include farm stores, because we miss our farm stores, right? We have a few, we have a couple left, but not a ton, not a ton. Now, farm stores, for anybody who by any chance doesn't know, this is this is a great drive-through dairy uh, store where you can get all kinds of goodies that you see in the middle here. Uh, towards the middle there, that brick. Remember that brick of ice cream? You had to put that baby on the counter for at least 15 minutes, right? There was no getting into that, because farm store had a deep, deep freeze, deep freezer, there were a guy would walk into the back, you know, pull out whatever you ordered, and you just had to take that home and really sit on it for a while. Now, there are not many farm stores left. Uh, farm stores goes back to 57. We have a couple left. This shot is a then and now of um, 46 and Hollywood Boulevard. So that's how it looked back in the day um, and as it is today. It's not a farm store anymore, but look at the building. It's like intact, it's exactly the same, and that's your quintessential farm store looking building there. Uh, we have a couple farm stores left. Uh, Johnson and 30th by the tracks. Yeah. True farm store left there. Sterling, yes, thank you. Cooper, yep. Yeah. Taft. Taft's still there? Okay, good, good. Thank you. So you guys know. So farm stores, um, again, it's the season. Eggnog. You gotta love the farm stores eggnog. It's the best eggnog. If you're wondering, try it. Just please make the ride. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> It's this nice, white, light-colored eggnog, but it's just probably the best eggnog we've ever had. So talking about farm stores, I do want to touch a little bit on the Hollywood dairies because it's so important to why 
we're all even here, just I mean, in terms of settling and everything. So the Hollywood Dairies, this is a shot of a Jersey cow, and it's not a cow from Jersey. <laughs> it's a kind of cow, a Jersey cow, it's a milking cow. So this cow's uh, quite all right. Um, she just used to be milked. And I would love to start with talking about MacArthur Dairy. So again, getting a little bias here. So I literally grew up on MacArthur. The land, the milk, the school, I grew up on MacArthur. Went to MacArthur 64th and Hollywood Boulevard. So that's the building as it stands there. If you're wondering a bit about MacArthur, so this is a shot um, of a MacArthur truck. In 1929, MacArthur started uh, MacArthur Dairy with just 20 of those Jersey cows. And two, two buddies of his that were willing to work with no, for nothing but food and shelter. So he was very fortunate to have that help um, and with, from his friends there. MacArthur donated 20 acres of land to Hollywood in what became MacArthur High School. Um, now, MacArthur Dairy as we know it, recognize that logo pretty well, still see it. Um, the cool thing is, is that Dean Foods, they purchased MacArthur Dairy in 1980, but they kept the MacArthur name which is super smart when you think about it, because something like um, Burdines and Macy's. So Macy's purchases Burdines, where does the Burdines name go? Just gone, it's a shame. You had this great clout with this Burdines name, but they didn't hold on to it. Whereas Dean Foods sees MacArthur, sees the brand and the clout in that, and they hold on to it. So that was definitely a, a good business move there for them. Uh, just being a little selfish, again, this is a shot of me at MacArthur. <laughs> I'm on the far left. And my husband's a nice, tall, beautiful man in blue there. <laughs> so I love that shot of him there. <laughs> but that's us truly at MacArthur. So I really have that connection there. It also gave me my husband. So I, I got to love that. <laughs> and again, if you haven't had the buttermilk, if you have to purchase a buttermilk, get the MacArthur buttermilk. It's the best buttermilk. I feel like I'm plugging this. But again, it's just knowledge you accumulate over time. You got you to respect that. All right. Waldrop Dairy. Waldrop Dairy. So I'm going to bring this up for you guys to take a peek at, too. So Waldrop Dairy goes back to 1928. It was the last functional dairy farm in Broward County. And most of it, of course, as you, most of you know, uh, it, it went into the Cooper City area. The shot on the left here is of the dairy buildings on Tafton University, which I'm sure most of you remember seeing. They were there for a long time. Um, as I said, I grew up on 68th and Taft, so I saw these buildings pretty much every single day of my life going by there. And if you got up before dawn, there was that familiar smell. <laughs> a very familiar smell, which in some strange way, when you think about it fondly, you're like, oh, I miss that smell. <laughs> but it was just this nice, soft manure smell. Let's just call it what it was. But it was very earthy, and it was just very, very nice. And to drive by there, it was always very foggy, just beautiful, beautiful land out there. So uh, Wiley Waldrop. 1928 to 2005, that's how long that dairy farm was intact. Uh, as we know it now, um, if you consider Tafton University on the east side, what home development is that now? Walnut, Walnut, Walnut Creek. Walnut Creek. Yes, and if we go further west, what home development is that now on the other side of university? Montera. Montera. Very good, very good. So yeah, it's just, it's all that home development area now. and. If you're not sure, there's a sign at Pine Island in Sterling. If you look under Pine Island, it says Waldrop Dairy Road, because that's where it's running through, where that dairy farm used to be. So very, very cool there. One more dairy I'd love to talk about, Perry Dairy. So this is a shot of our Perry Airport, North Perry Airport. Joan Michelson's here. I learned a lot from Joan's talk last month. Thank you, Joan. I think I see you in the back there. <laughs> Thank you. So there's North Perry Airport. And the, again, we all pass this sign, North Perry Airport. And I've been wondering, is there, was there a South Perry Airport? Joan answered my question. Yes, yes, there, there, there was. So it was further kind of in the Miramar area. It's kind of near where the Turnpike runs through now and housing. It's, it would be very hard to find. It wasn't a functional airport as we know it. It was just kind of overflow for what the airport was. And um, Henry D. Perry, so he was a dairy farmer. He sold 640 acres to the Navy in 1943, which was to be used for Navy flight training between Hollywood Boulevard and Pembroke Road. 
Because you've got to remember, again, uh, west of 441, that was all dairy. All dairy, all Everglades. Just a great place to have some flight training out there. Uh, there was also a restaurant there at North Perry. Do we remember the name of the restaurant? Maydays. Maydays. Nice. Thank you. Maydays on Pembroke Road. So you can kind of see the, hear the planes coming and going. It was really a neat place to, to go. I went a couple times. It was really, really cool. I'm glad you're mentioning that. Thank you. I'm going to highlight that. Yes. So you're right. You see that original circle. If you don't, follow the little light there. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Look at that. That, that was the original taxing area. Very cool. Yep. Yes. They, were, they would practice the Navy. It's, just, it's quite a sight, and it's just amazing that it's still there. And we have to really do all we can to, to keep that intact. Now, Perry Airport, um, and with Henry Perry, there's a lot of legacy there. We have a lot of schools um, in Miramar, Perry Elementary, Perry Middle. And um, anybody who lives even near this area, you recall the sounds they, the, of the, the jet engines and the planes still going by. It's just really cool to hear them. Okay, guys, so that's a bit about the dairies. So with that, let's kind of keep with the theme. So Delaware Chicken Farm and Ludwig. So I am lumping these together for a reason. Delaware Chicken Farm. So Delaware Chicken Farm started by Charles and Verda Leininger. Um, they uh, started this grocer with just a small chicken ranch. It's still owned, third generation by now. Uh, meat, seafood, poultry goes back to 1951 on State Road 7. And on the left there, you see a picture of a lady sorting some eggs over at Delaware Chicken Farm. And Ludwig's, uh, there's a shot on the right there. That's Martin Ludwig. So Martin, Marvin. 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 Marvin, thank you. I'll keep me honest, I love you guys. <laughs> Marvin was actually um, married to Charles and Verna's daughter. So I always wondered, how do these two businesses not compete with each other? It's kind of fascinating because they do some stuff similar and they kind of overlap in other areas. Well, look at that. It's a family affair there. They got two businesses truly running there that um, have everyone's best interest in mind. And to give you an idea, if, if you're not completely familiar with uh, Delaware Chicken Farm, I have a video that I hope the sound's going to work. I'm going to play with the sound, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Hang on. I promise I'll get it to work. <laughs> Hang on, guys, I'll replay it. Yeah, we'll be good to go. All right, guys, so that's our Delaware chicken farm. Michelle Bernstein um, gives up credit every, every week when she does her show. Yeah. Does she? Yeah. Oh, cool. Hey, listen, to be covered by Michelle Bernstein can't be a bad thing. Nice. Now, guys, to give you an idea, so when they started Delaware chicken farm, so figure you're in the mid-50s, right, the mid-1950s. How many cars per hour do you think went by that place on State Road 7? 20. Someone's close over here. 
I think I heard somebody say five. It's eight. Thank you. Very good. Eight cars an hour would pass by Delaware Chicken Farm in 1955. Can we imagine that? Unbelievable. And figure in the 50s, of course, I mean, not every car had to have, not every house had to have three, four cars, you know, that not everybody had a car. The population out there was more like, it was kind of getting to the 20,000s. We're at almost 60, 70,000 now at West, in West Hollywood. So it's tripled uh, by far. And again, the times have changed. So that place has been there a long time, seen a lot, and it's really impressive. And as you saw in that video there, I mean, they're, they're turkey. Of, it's just awesome. So but right across the street used to be the, all the Indian shows. Yes. So, uh, so like the tourists came there. It wasn't really the regular. Look at that. Tourists. Thank you. Look at that. Yeah, so not even just us locals, right? The tourists are coming there for other as these Seminole Indians. And they're running into this place, too. Very cool. Thank you. OK, folks, so this is a shot of the diplomat. On the left, it's a shot from 1987. The room service menu that I have up here is from the 1970s. So those are 1970s prices. They're hilarious because they're really, really low. <laughs> and to give you an idea of the popularity of the diplomat, again, consider we're in the mid-50s, right? We're, 19, we're in 1958. This is the only hotel between Miami and Fort Lauderdale. That's it. The only hotel between those two huge, huge cities. So this place was the place to go, um, a resort, a spa, golf, tennis, very, very high end. Um, I go into this more in my other talk if you guys come to that another time, but just to touch on it in terms of the dining aspect, this was a really a hot place. It um, garnered the likes of Sinatra, Bing Crosby, Judy Garland, I mean the Rat Pack party at the Diplomat, this was really the place to be. Freeland? Thank you. Pantry Pride and Food Fair started there. Nice, nice. Uh, another interesting fact I mentioned in another talk I had was um, John Walsh, Adam Walsh's father. He was a cabana boy, the diplomat, when he first came to Hollywood. So it's really got a lot of history in this place here. There's, um, there's also a story that in 1974, the diplomat was able to lure Sinatra out of his retirement for $200,000 to perform on New Year's Eve. So he, they, even the diplomat was able to get um, the old blue eyes out of retirement. So pretty cool. OK, guys, Fowlers. This is where I'm going to need some help. Because <laughs> unfortunately, I never got to go to Fowlers. And I think I might know why. So I have Fowlers as opening in the 40s. But I don't really know when they closed. Does anybody know when they closed? Roughly? Was it still open in the 80s? I feel like it might have been. They, they move from, okay. Thank you, Jane. Okay, all right, very good. So Fowler's, uh, as you see here, you got Fow Fowler's a Great Southern Hotel and Restaurant. So yes, it was, uh, I believe, a part of the Great Southern, if not in front of the Great Southern Hotel, on Young Circle. And uh, did anybody get to go to Fowler's? What's this good food that they serve? What kind of food? Everything. Everything? American, American food? American food? Uh, and the price was $2.95 for dinner. $2.95 for dinner. Love it. Love it. That's some good food. All right. <laughs> and as we see here, as mentioned and as it says here, it's, a, it's um, with the Great Southern Hotel. So the Great Southern Hotel, again, um, you know, I, this was one of those great historic landmarks one of Joseph Young's first four hotels that were built by him, one of the first four original hotels. Uh, the hotel closed in 91, but it, this whole area and the Great Southern Hotel really lives on um, in a famous movie. Do we know what movie that is? Midnight, Midnight Cowboy. Cowboy. Nice. So if you guys don't remember, I have a shot of it for you, so check this out. Look at that. There's our Hollywood, right? Yes. The beautiful young John Voight. <laughs> very nice, very nice. OK, team. So next, 
Geppettos. This is another one. I unfortunately did not go to Geppettos, but I heard good things about Geppettos. Very good. What was so good about Geppettos? Most everything. Everything. Um, I can see here there's mentioning of an appetizer buffet, which does not sound bad. They also had sampler dinners. I guess you can kind of sample a little bit if you weren't sure what you wanted to get. Uh, this was on the circle um, in, in Harrison. So I definitely have it open around 1974, but I don't really have an idea of when it closed. So I think uh, some of you get to go to Geppetto's, a few of you? Very nice, good, good. And this area has been through a lot since Geppetto's. I guess at some point in the 90s, it was a comedy club, uh, a Tex-Mex place, an Irish pub. And now, I don't know if it's vacant or not, but, uh, it, but all in all, it's definitely a, a mainstay of what was our history. So Geppetto's, cool place. Geno's. <sighs> the size, I feel the size. <laughs> I'm gonna miss Geno's. I, and I gotta say, guys, so as you can see, you know, based on the, the whole big you know, roster we have out there for all of our talks for the year, I knew I was doing this talk over a year ago. And I really had hoped to say at that point that it was the place that I enjoyed still going to, but unfortunately, Geno closed. Gino closed um, sometime last year, but uh, this location, as I understand, has been here since about the 80s. I think him and his dad, uh, so it's Tony Paparella and his son Gino. This is, um, was an Italian deli with a full service butcher, authentic Italian bakery um, on Johnson and 57th. And um, they had been in business for a long time, even before they had this location in Hollywood. Uh, the cool thing about Geno's was the service was really fun. You know, you'd get your number, and they'd call the number, and if you, you know, you, you better responded. <laughs> if you didn't respond, they chided you appropriately, but it was all in good fun. Um, but then, you know, they'd say, come on over, the water's great, and all these fun little things. They'd have a good time with you over in the deli area. So Geno's was always a fun place. I'm very sad to see this place gone now. Um, I hope it reincarnates in some way. I just, I'm going to miss the heck out of it. Oh, okay. All right, guys. So, world famous Hemingways. So, I'm starting with this shot. I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, this um, is across from the tracks, just north of Hollywood Boulevard on 21st. This is a picture going back to 1924 of what was first in this building, which was the Hollywood Publishing Company. Then throughout the, the remainder of the 20s, 1925 to about 1928, um, it then became Hollywood's first city hall. And in that city hall, they also had the, the police station, the jail, and the courthouse. So imagine all that <laughs> in one bit there. <laughs> uh, the next shot I'd like to show you. So this is a shot of Hemingway's. Um, going back to the 70s. So you can't see it real well, but it actually says the name on the uh, garages there. Um, I know the Hollywood Historical Society has some much better photos than this, but I was out of town all last week, so I couldn't get to them. But there's this one shot that you guys will kind of have an idea. But again, I want you to just look at the, the integrity of the building. So as you see it there at first, it's not changing a whole lot there. Um, Hemingway's Restaurant, again, huge. They. Um, Beautiful, beautiful inside, as I know. Unfortunately, again, I did not get to go, but as I know, it had beautiful crystal chandeliers, porcelain statues. Tiny Tim performed there. Tiny Tim performed there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Love it, love it. <laughs> and they were known for this very interesting dessert at the end of the meal. Do you remember what that was? It was a banana on every plate. Do we recall that, anybody? They gave you a banana, and I guess the and it was in the skin. <laughs> they put the banana on the plate because the idea was you could take it home if you wanted to. It was very sanitary, so the whole idea is they were serving you this nice, cool dessert if you wanted to take it home with you. A um, couple of other things I heard were really good. The soup was supposed to be amazing. Why was the soup so good? What was the soup? French onion. French onion. Oh, like, that can't be bad. All right. And what's the deal with the black bread? Oh. Okay. So I guess that was like a nice, good pumpernickel or something. Yeah. That's, that sounds good. <laughs> nice. Well, then um, we move on to how the building looks today, and it's Runa's Peruvian Cuisine. And again, you see the building is still pretty much intact there. 
you walk into this building, it still looks, you still have this feeling of the ambiance of what was definitely once was at that point in that restaurant. It went through, um, again, several other incarnations throughout the 90s. Um, it was declared a historical society, a historical society um, in 1997 by the city. Uh, became a bar in the 2000s, and now, of course, it's Runa's uh, Peruvian cuisine. All right. So Hollywood Bread. So the Hollywood Bread Company was there from the 50s, uh, around from the 50s through the 90s. And most of you guys, I'm sure, know Hollywood Bread, but for those that don't, Hollywood Bread was really ahead of its time. It was a reduced calorie bread. Imagine that, going way back then. And it was made with vegetable flours, you know, not wheat flour, but vegetable flours. It was cut in thinner slices. I mean, just imagine like a gluten-free thing going back to the 50s and 60s. That's really, that's a big deal. That's someone truly ahead of their time. Um, Eleanor Hansberry, who ran Hollywood Bread. Um, Clive Taylor, he wrote this awesome article for the Hollywood Gazette. I highly recommend you guys search that when you get home and read it in depth if you're at all interested in Hollywood Bread. It just talks about the the building and what it's gone through, um, what the business went through, and having been run by a woman was really rare in that time. So it's a great, great story in the Gazette. Uh, I do have a really cool commercial. Some of you guys have seen it, but I think it's worth repeating because it's pretty quick. Uh, before I play it, I want you to look at the L's in Hollywood. They're kind of stylized, like curvy like that. Because when you see the commercial, you'll see that this is the exact same company we're talking about, Hollywood Bread. That's our Hollywood bread. And the bread building, again, unfortunately, has been going through a lot of transitions and for sale. I think finally now it is sold. Uh, rumor has it that they might keep the sign. Fingers crossed, because that would be super, super cool if they would keep that sign going. OK. Joe Sonkin's Gold Coast. All right, let's talk about uh, Mr. Joe Sonkin here. <laughs> so. This uh, was located on Ocean Drive. Uh, Joe Sonkins has been around going from the 50s to about the 90s. So that's a really old shot of the building and signage. This next, next picture, the signage is I'm sure what most of us remember. It was like this, I feel like, for a little bit longer. So that's um, a good shot of the restaurant. Now, this establishment was, 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 was very interesting, <laughs> to say the least. They um, had mobsters come from time to time, movie stars, I mean, just really, I mean, let's face it, you're coming for the food. But the whole idea is that it became such a hot spot for rumored mobster activity that there was a Senate subcommittee that considered this like a secret meeting place. And it's even mentioned in the, um, the JFK assassination files, Joe Sonkins is. So it's really kind of interesting that it, that Hollywood thing kind of goes into that big historical event there. The um, Location run by Joe Sonkin. So if you guys can turn to your right, there's that middle photograph. That is Joe Sonkin with, with his dog <laughs> at his restaurant. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll hit the lights for a minute so you guys can see it a little bit better. So there you go. So I have to tell you guys, that's not necessarily a staged photo. He did this a lot. He would be in that corner if he wasn't well, first of all, he came in, I guess, when this place opened at the crack of dawn to when it, the last person was out. He really ran this establishment very seriously. And he knew what was going on in the kitchen, with the customers, you name it. He really was very, a very hands-on owner and manager. But when he wasn't doing that, he was at his table with one of his dogs, um, chomping a cigar, looking at receipts, just real old school. And if a customer complained about the dog being in there, imagine this is definitely a long time ago that's not how it is now <laughs> but if a customer complained about the dog being in there he would ask the customer to leave <laughs> that's the kind of guy Joe was he's like oh you don't like being my dog here there's the door that's he had no bones about it he would just kick them out of his restaurant that's how he wanted it to be in his restaurant um, he also was known for perhaps having a, a temper 
uh, if you did something to upset him, he would unlace profanities and just really like go to town on you. Uh, my favorite story that I heard, and again, I don't know if it's true, but I just love the idea that it could be, is one Sunday morning, somebody brought Joe Sonkin a big bag of bagels, and he opened them and he smelled the bag, and then he threw the bag against the wall and said, these are not from Sage. Oh. <laughs> he, he knew, he knew those bagels were not from Sage. And, and again, anybody who's been here a long time knows Sage, Sage and Hollandale, I mean, come on. If, you, if you're expecting Sage bagels and you don't get Sage bagels, that, that is annoying, you know, because those are probably some of the best bagels. <laughs> So that is a shot of, of Joe Sonkin with his dog. Um, I'm proud to say that was donated to us at the Hollywood Historical Society. So we do have that in our research center if you guys ever want to see it again close up. OK, you guys can cut the lights again if you'd like. So now that location is Giorgio's Grill, I believe. Gigi's, OK. Gigi's, Gigi's Waterfront. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so you can still kind of see the area there, um, the building. But unfortunately, the whole glamour and glitz of, of Joe Sonkin's is no longer, but we have that great story with Joe Sonkin. Okay, guys, let's talk La Tub. So La Tub, the land of La Tub is interesting. Back in the 50s, this was a Sunoco gas station on the land, and then we had the gas shortage in the 70s. So that Sunoco couldn't really withstand itself for, for much longer. So a gentleman, Russell Kohuth, he purchased the land in 74. He starts jogging on the beach, picking up all this mishmash junk stuff on the beach. Basically starts kind of building what we know is the image of the restaurant, which is pretty cool. They, um, the restaurant now on Ocean Drive is run by um, Steve and Robin Seidel. They run this restaurant. And any of you guys that have been there know that you can't just walk into a tub and get a burger. There's definitely a wait. So if you get there when they open, you're lucky you'll be waiting about 40, 45 minutes. That's on a great day. Because you're because you're getting there as soon as the grill is starting, as soon as they're on that first round of burgers. Because the grill is not huge, and the burgers are. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Look at that. Look at that shot of that burger on the upper right. I mean, they're about two inches thick, guys. A two inch thick burger. So imagine how long you know it takes to cook something like that. And with that, they take about 20 minutes to cook. And considering the size of their grill, that's about 90 burgers an hour. So it sounds like a lot, but they're always getting so many people in there that they can't, it's hard to keep up with that demand. So on, an, on, another busy, on a busier day, maybe more like a two, three hour wait. That's about right for La Tub. And it's gotten a lot worse over the past 10 years, as some, as some of you know, maybe even 20 years, my goodness. Because on the bottom right there, we have this nice lady named Oprah Winfrey <laughs> who got wind of La Tub and has told you know, all of her viewers, this is the greatest burger in the nation. So now everybody comes to Hollywood, comes to South Florida, they want La Tub. So the wait has gotten a little bit worse based on that too. Um, and Oprah pulled that from GQ magazine. So GQ magazine featured it, Oprah took um, that as well, and now it's really world renowned, our La Tub there in Hollywood. So very cool, very cool that that's still open in Hollywood. Ah, Lums. Ah, Lums. So, Lums has a cool story. Lums was started actually by two brothers in, in Miami. I did not know that. I learned that in my research. Uh, going back to 1956, Stewart and Clifford Perlman, they founded Lums in uh, Miami Beach. There were many, many locations throughout. Um, this is one of the better shots I could get. This is the one in Davie. So ugh, I know I'm like going a little outside, but it's a, it's a good shot. Um, that is now the Flashback Diner, that, that old Lums area. The one most of us knew, I'm sure, was across from the Hollywood Fashion Center. That was the Lums that most of us frequented. And now it's a Sensation Adult Video Store. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so there you go. If you want to revisit your Lums, that's where you can check it out. <laughs> so Lums was known for a lot of things. Um, hot dogs steamed in beer. That was a, a really big, big thing that, that they had. Um, here's a coupon from 1985 talking about their roasted chicken for just $2.39. Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> and uh, again, if you guys want to get a better idea of all the kinds of foods they served at Lums, I found this great commercial from 76 with Milton Berle. Oh, so wow. check this out. You know why I come to Lums, good buddy? They grill the steaks just perfect. And the fish fry dinner is so tender and delicious. I love the juicy roast. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
my source of I like it when mommy and daddy take me to Walmart. <laughs> Get a better choice when you choose lumps. You get a better choice. You get a better choice when you choose lumps. <laughs> There's lumps. Nice. <laughs> okay, guys. So, Mimi's. Mimi's is still around. Mimi's still kicking. Very exciting. And uh, this is run, of course, by the Belisi family. Frank and Linda. Most of you guys probably even know Frank and Linda, or Frank and Ray, Frankie and Anthony, the sons. Uh, homemade ravioli, manicotti, sauce. They got pizza now. It's just, it's, it's just a wonderful place. Across from where Gino's was on 57th and Johnson. The business has been around since 1970 to the present. They actually had another location before the one in Hollywood where, when the kids were much younger. And the kids, um, their daycare center, I guess, was next to where that location was. And they'd run over on their recess break and they would take naps on the flower bags on the floor. I always loved that story. I thought, like, gosh, that's so, I talk about growing up in the business. <laughs> no wonder why the sons are still so hands-on there. So that is Mimi's for you, and you can certainly still get your Mimi's. Moy's! Moy's Restaurant. So I'm going to just do a quick intro on Moy's, and then I, I actually have a great, great announcement. So Moy's, located on US 1 in the Circle in Hollywood, um, was around from about the 40s to about the 70s, run by George and Jean Gun Moy, um, Chinese American restaurant, cocktail lounge, and there's just a lot of great history and fun facts here. And I'm proud to say we actually have the granddaughter of the owners here today. <laughs> so Jane, if you can just kind of say hello. <laughs> <laughs> make enough money during the hot summers that in New York in order to buy all of their produce and everything else in order to come here for the winter. And they did this for many years and they had the smaller restaurant and then my father and mother joined them after my father got out of the military. And um, they started, they built the newer uh, portion of it. <coughs> and uh, it was, um, uh, very interesting. We had the performers at the Diplomat would come, Jackie Gleason, the Rat Pack, all of them would come after they performed. So we got to see a lot of um, celebrities growing up. Uh, there was a, just a lot of people. Um, unfortunately, after my grandfather passed away, my father wanted to concentrate on banking. And he, we had, they had already started American Bank of Hollywood, so they sold the business. And as you can see, American Bank became, took over the property as a, um, one of their branches for a long time until American Bank was uh, sold in 1996. So it's, it's gone through a lot of transformations. Um, we brought some things. Unfortunately, I did not know that this was going to happen until this morning. Otherwise, I would have brought Stacy some more things to show you. Um, the Historical Society, we've donated many, many things to them. So if you want to see the old menus and everything else, they're there. I think mm -hmm. they're digitized. And uh, we, just, we just had a great time. We had the Buddha, um, when everybody remembers the Buddha. This was also featured on the first um, issue, the cover of the Miami Magazine. And I think the Historical Society also has that. What happened to the Buddha? Okay, good question. <laughs> <laughs> when the um, building itself was sold to, uh, there was a deal made by the guy who was going to make the trusses for the bank that was going to be there. And he got the Buddha in exchange for part of his um, payment. So he moved the Buddha, and I believe it's either on North Lake or South Lake, or it had been in the back of his home mm. for many, many years. I don't know where the Buddha is now. I do, we each, when um, Miss, uh, Miss the artist who also did the stained glass, he made the Buddha, he gave each one of us a replica. So my sisters and I each have a replica, along with um, part of the stained glass and whatnot. And unfortunately that could not be saved, but you'll see in the little box that my sister Jeannie made that we do have pieces of the tile which was imported uh, from Japan. So there was a lot of effort uh, that had gone into this. And, and, uh, 
So that's so if anybody sees the Buddha, let us know. <laughs> I'm curious. I mean, it was massive. They did have to take it off in a in a flatbed truck, and we do have a picture here of us climbing on the Buddha in the '60s, uh, fondly known as Uncle Charlie. Uh -oh. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here for your account, for your accounts, for your memories. That's awesome, awesome. And yeah, there you go, guys. Here's some great shots of how the place looked. Um, I have an entry from my a coupon from the phone book. You look at that luau chicken. Is that a, is that a dollar? Is it? A dollar fifty for the luau chicken. Look at that. And I always love how the phone number, you know, it's just like dial. Two, four, two, seven. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. So yes, please. When we're when we're done with our talk in a few moments, just please make sure you guys check out the things that Jane brought today. There's some really awesome stuff back there that I think you'll really get a chance to see today that you might not get a chance to see again. So certainly take a look at that. And our historical society definitely has more. Okay, guys, Neba. So Neba roast beef. And that upper right photo, that building might start to look quite familiar to a lot of you. So on Federal Highway, there were several locations, but there are just, uh, just to name a few, Federal Highway, Young Circle, um, State Road 7. So Neba Roast Beef was quite huge. Um, this is their headquarters in Hollywood going back to 1969. And this actually was the former headquarters of the National Baker's Service, which was Hollywood Bread. So Hollywood Bread left this building went to their beautiful, big, tall Hollywood bread building as we know it today, but that was the original headquarters, but then became Neva. Uh, this chain of roast beef hit its peak in 69 when there were 70 units in the United States, which sounds like a nice number, but there was another competitor that had 400 units by then, known as Arby's, very good, <laughs> thanks. So Neva's unfortunately didn't last uh, that much longer after that, and as we know it, it became Papa John's, right? The Papa John's building. But this is probably one of the coolest buildings I've ever seen. I'm so super sad that it's not there anymore. Um, now, of course, on that location is the Hollywood Cirque, the Circle, right? The, the big, tall, 25-story building uh, with all those apartments and hotels there. But this was just always a really cool building to look at, and I love the history behind it um, with Neba Roast Beef because when you consider the logo that they had, I mean, look on that bottom right there. It's the building. It's the building. So it's really cool to see that there. And that's your, that's Neva for us there, guys. Did, did that yeah. change to the roast beefery? Does anybody know the answer to that? Did that change to the roast beefery? There was a chain, there was a chain around for a while called the roast beefery. Ah. I know it from West Palm, and I thought that that same place changed to the roast beefery before it Oh. Not sure good enough, no think so. Good question, yeah, no, that's good to know though. All right, guys. So let's look at Ricky's. <laughs> okay. Your dad built Ricky's. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Do you mind saying who you are? Or? Steve? Todd Nolan. Todd Nolan, thank you. Dad built, oh, that's great. Built Ricky's. That's a, look, 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 celebrities in the house today. This is great, guys. I love it. Wow. Well, uh, that is, let me say, that is a building that is still standing. So good job there. He did a wonderful job there. Uh, Ricky's, as we know it, you know, known for the wings, the burgers, all those goodies. Now, this was established in 1955 by, by Tom and uh, Cecia Rickenback. Rickenback, hence the name. Rickies. So that's where the name comes from, from the Rickenbacks who started the organization. Then in the 70s, the Mitchell family takes over Rickies. And uh, the son, Billy, who's featured in this photo here, uh, he actually manages the hot sauce business now. But the Mitchell family still owns and, and runs Rickies. And I'm sure some of you know, but again, for those that don't, Billy is very famous for being um, a video game expert. He had the top Donkey Kong Pac-Man scores for a very long time, although that's somehow in debate now, which I'm not going to get into. <laughs> but he was known for that for a really long time. And um, I know when I meet people, especially pe younger people, like millennials, people in their 20s, they always want to know, like, oh my gosh, you live in Hollywood? You live near Ricky's? Is the Pac-Man game in there? Do they have the video games in there? Like, they're just so fascinated by that connection 
with the video games to Reiki's. So that's kind of how we're known a little bit outside of Florida in terms of this organization. Uh, but Ricky's, again, just a place that's still kicking there. Okay, Seminole Tribe of Florida. So again, this is a bit of a personal favorite for me, so I had to include this. I, uh, again, being raised in West Hollywood, I have been um, around the Seminoles for a very long time. I worked for the Seminole Tribe for about eight years, so I really have a good feel for uh, the culinary aspects of this organization and tribe. <laughs> They're very delicious, and some things you can get in South Florida are featured here. So on the far right, that is uh, fry bread. Anyone who has had fry bread knows it's kind of like a, it's, it's a fried dough. It's like an elephant ear. It's delicious. We're in November, December-ish now. They're making pumpkin fry bread. Get your hands on some, please. If you can go to any seminal event over the next two months, it's wonderful. Uh, also, Sofki on the top there, that's a, a drinkable beverage of grits and corn. Uh, again, just very, very delicious, pretty, pretty healthy compared to the fry bread. <laughs> and then on the bottom left, does anybody know what that, that is on the left left? Hearts of Palm. Hearts of Palm. Awesome. And in the Seminole world, it's known as um, Swamp Cabbage. So I heard Swamp Cabbage before I knew it was Hearts of Palm. Thank you. And I thought, like, what is this swamp cabbage? I have to try this. This sounds amazing. Well, it's delicious. It's hard to palm. So, and it's there, of course, served with some meat. So Seminole Tribe, you know, again, food is a very integral part of their culture, too. I'd say if you haven't been to an event in Hollywood with the tribe, go just once just to try some of these goodies. It's really, it's a really good um, place, and the festivals have a lot of really good food there. Okay. So... Again, featuring two at once here, for a reason, of course, we have Subcenter and Sicilianos. So a family affair, again, you know, Sicilianos uh, starts as a, the Frozen Custard Company and is a Subcenter in Miami, and they open locations in Hollywood. Uh, Don Drybread, I'm sure most of us know that name, Don Drybread. Uh, there was that great dry bread Christmas house on Taft. Oh, yes, that's great. I love that house. Uh, they, um, the dry bread now, dry breads own this, uh, run this establishment. Um, Don Dry Bread being Siciliano's great grandson runs that Hollywood location, and also Siciliano's custard next door. So, uh, and again, if you guys, anybody who's been around here since the 70s and 80s, you know that dry bread house in terms of Christmas back in the day. It was like the place to go. I mean, before there was Magical Village and even Santa's Enchanted Forest was good, but it was far. I mean, you go into the dry bread house, it was just beautiful lights everywhere. They had 130,000 lights back then. That's a lot. That's a lot for a house. Yes, and then they moved to that seminal area where now there was a hard rock. But there was that great empty land there, right, where they could have that event. Oh, 95, 95, messed that up, yeah, darn, yeah, thank you, unbelievable. And there's a shot there, if you guys haven't had Siciliana's frozen custard, just, you can, of course, get it mixed like that, it's very, very delicious. Okay, let's talk Sunny's. So Sunny's is the real deal. Um, Sunny Nigro moves from Philly to South Florida to West Hollywood across from a cow pasture, 1958 this place opens guys wow. sunny's is goes back to 1958 it's been gone going on a long time um his son john is still there again some of you probably know and seen john you've been seeing john for years he's still <laughs> running the place and they're serious business there they start baking at 7 a.m for an 11:30 a.m opening so that bread is legit it's fresh and they start that early to, to make that delicious bread uh, again 66th and taft west hollywood and I have um, a shot up here of the menu that I'm wondering if you guys know why they have these crazy numbers. Does anybody know why it's called the 50? It looks like an S. It looks like an S that stands for sauce, and the O stands for onions. So sauce and onions. So the 95, if you flip a 9, what letter does it look like? A P. So plain with sauce. And a 90 is plain with onions. And then the 9, 
It's just plain. <laughs> Blew my mind. <laughs> Blew my mind. Because again, I remember being a kid thinking, these numbers are so stupid. Why isn't it just one, two, three, four? <laughs> Why are they called that? But you got to figure when they're in the kitchen area and they're making this, you know, you see a, a 50, you know what you got to do. You know, you got sauce and onions. That's what you got to do. So I just always loved the idea that that menu had kind of a little secret to it. And that's our Sunnies for us. And again, still kicking. Great place. Great place. They were featured on uh, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Thank you. Yes. Look at that. Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. So you got to imagine. That's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Sunnies is getting that far in national, national syndication there. Thank you. Very cool. Okay, guys. Top of the home. So... I might appreciate a couple memories here because, again, I did not get a chance to go to Top of the Home. So Top of the Home was on Harrison Street on the 19th <coughs> floor of the Home Federal Tower around from about the mid-60s to about the early 90s. And it was called Top of the Home, but it was called Dick Cammy's Top of the Home. Dick Cammy, as in what? Cammy's. Cammy Seashells, right? Had a few locations. Cammy Seashells. So back in the 60s and 70s, again, this is a hot spot. This is a place where celebrities, entertainers, Tom Jones is rumored to have been to Top of the Home as well. And in 1964, it's the tallest building in Broward County at the time. Wow. Imagine that, right? Imagine that. So next, Villa Rose. So Billy Rose is still around. Chicago South Thin Crust Pizza. If you're like my husband, he puts the salad on the pizza. Likes to do that. Stay Road 7. Stay Road 7. It's been around since 1957. Still around. And to give you guys an idea, so here's a shot of it back in the 50s. And just look at the bar area there. Because this next shot, it's not, it hasn't changed a whole lot, right? <laughs> To change at all. So Villa Rose is still quite quite a hop hop in place there. We all love our Villa Rose. Okay, guys, Wags. So Wags was huge in the 70s and 80s, right? I remember the one across from Landmark Funeral Home. I think now it's a Chase Bank. It's a bank. And this was really again kind of a precursor to that casual dining, like we all know, like an Applebee's or a Chili's. I mean, there was, there was Wags, right? We had Wags. And uh, most of them ended up being Shoney's. Most of them got converted to Shoney's. Uh, one thing that fascinated me is it was owned and operated by Walgreens, which I did not know that. And if you look at the font, the W, right, and the Walgreens in the building, it's the same. So that's really trippy. And I discovered that because I am now a Walgreens employee, and I should know this. <laughs> I, I learned that the hard way, but wow, that's amazing. Uh, if you don't remember Wags and some of the food fare that they served, I have this great commercial from 86, so enjoy this one. All right, guys, that's our wags there. And with that, I think there's another place we're all pretty familiar with, which is Woolworths. Hey, Woolworths. <laughs> we got to love our Woolworths. So this is, um, this is a very stylized shot. I, I get it. It's an actual photo. But this is pretty much the location on 19th and the Boulevard, right? <laughs> so if this is 19th and Hollywood Boulevard, to give you guys an idea of the transition that that corner has gone through. So it's a Woolworth in the 50s and 60s. Before that, in the 40s, it's Lovett's Grocery. So it's Lovett's, then it's Woolworth. Then it becomes Poland's Department Store. Then in the 90s, it's O'Hara's Nightclub. Who remembers O'Hara's? Yeah, there we go. Then Whiskey Tango, right? Whiskey Tango. So that's the location where Whiskey Tango was. 
And I say was, because what's coming there now? Do we know? Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks, yes. So a Twin Peaks is coming there. I mean, I'm a little, a little nervous. It's, it's a chain. It's, is it? Yes. It's still the original marquee. is still up there. Hey, nice. Thanks, Stephen. Cool. So, you know, hopefully uh, the historical look of this drag will remain. You know, I'm a little nervous about a chain coming, but hopefully we'll be okay. Twin Peaks. Uh, to give you guys an idea, too, again, of Woolworth, uh, this is a really cool shot from the uh, Sun Tatler. It's announcing Hollywood's 40th anniversary, so this is a, probably from the 60s. And you can see the, the whole the stores that are mentioned here. And just for fun, I'll, I'll rattle them off to you because they're written real small. And see if you remember some of these. Uh, Bell Shoes, Bob's Beauty Salon, Gordon's Jewelers, Grayson's, Jackson's Byron's. Quick Check Store, Kennedy's, Marge's Shop, uh, Rhymes Toys, thank you, GC Murphy Co., Publix, Sherwood Williams, Town Finance, Jules Barbershop, Woolworth, Look and See Gifts and Cards, and Walgreen Drug. So this is a shot of an announcement of um, the stores that are at this Taft and Hollywood shopping plaza. And again, this is pretty fun to me because this is across the street where I grew up. So this whole vision of all these stores is burned in my mind for the most part, especially the Woolworth, the Woolworth um, that was the right Publix front and center. The Publix is still there. The Publix is still there, yes. And the Walgreens has moved around a couple times too, but I know that baby's still there too. So that's just a kind of a cool little um, ad from that celebration at that time. And here's a menu from the 60s. So again, to give you guys a feel for some of these costs, <laughs> Malt and milk for 25 cents. I mean, almost everything on here is 25 cents. A Sunday, right? Sandwiches for 50, 60 cents. Yes. So there was a restaurant in the Hollywood Fashion Center. Is it a Walgreens or a Woolworths? It has this football hot dogs that make the bread. We have a great question here, guys, and I think I'm, gonna get, I, I'm wondering, I want to get your opinion. What was the restaurant that was in the Hollywood Fashion Center? Was it a Walgreens? Woolworths? Well, they were in the Hollywood Mall, not Fashion Center. The Hollywood Mall? Okay. What was in the Hollywood Mall? A German deli. So yeah, it's, I, I know it's, I think, I mean, I remember even in the fashion center having a diner-esque, and I, I don't remember if it was a Woolworth or a Walgreens at the time either, but it sounds like we've all been to some incarnation of these. Very cool, very cool, guys. So, at this stage, I want to talk with you guys a little bit about what we can do next, because sadly, I'm nearing the end of my talk, but... I do want to let you know again, uh, if you want to stay for maybe another 15, 20 minutes, I will rerun the pre-show. Uh, there's no explanation really or audio to it. It's just some great, great photographs. So if you want to stick around, if you didn't see it, certainly um, get a little comfortable and stick around for that. Uh, in terms of if you want more, where do you go to learn more, right? Well, you're in a library, so <laughs> first thing you could do if you're feeling really crazy, you can go to the 900 section, look up history, and you'll be good to go there. But if you don't even want to walk that far, we got some books on the back left-hand corner. So take a look at those. Uh, we also um, have our website. For those of you that want to jot it down on the left, again, near the books, hollywoodhistoricalsociety.org, thank you. I do have that written up there. Um, as well as my contact information, if you wanna take a look at what I'm working on next. Most of you look familiar from the Sportatorium bit that I did when I was talking about growing up in Hollywood. Well, fortunately, that's getting a lot more advanced. We're getting a lot, a lot more steam with that, guys. We put in, we put in for a Florida historical marker for that location. So it's in review, fingers crossed that it gets approved. Uh, there also is a possibility of a book. So looking forward to that, keep our fingers crossed. I will also be presenting a full sportatorium talk next December. So I'll see you guys this time next year. We, uh, but, but before that, we have a talk in January. So I don't wanna 
I don't want to like go against uh, mentioning that. So anybody, I don't think Karen or when is our talk in January? You know, Valerie Pansiera. Oh, Valerie Pansiera is going to do a talk. Just, she just left. Yes. Okay. Talk about the landmark funeral home, the development, and that's going to be awesome. So the history of landmark funeral home will be great. All right, guys. So that's our next event. If you want to see more stuff like this, become a member. That's what we always would love to have. And all in all, thanks for coming today. I want to see a good photo, you guys.